Welcome to the latest This Week's Acker podcast, sponsored by Skybet, Acker Freeze, Tom, Jake and Joe with you to run through the Saturday schedule. Coming up then on this episode, the champagne is on ice for some teams, but do they make it into our Acker? The hot takes are out for the final few weeks, and we're looking at one team who was 750 to 1 for the playoffs less than a month ago, and they may well do it. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel to make sure that you never miss an episode. And remember to keep it fun. Never bet more you can afford. This podcast is 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. So last week's Ackerland, let's always start by looking back on last week. Uh, Barrow were the team to let us down. And they were the Uh, one that I'm pretty sure we opened with as well as the most confident selection that Barrow get the job done against Swindon. And they did not. They lost. Didn't even draw. Yeah, they they were the unanimous agreement, which we don't usually do too often on this show. They were the team that were, as soon as they were brought up, it was, yep, get them in, get them in. Uh, And they were 2-0 down after, what, half an hour? And it was just... It was it was more annoying because everyone was winning. Everyone else was already winning. You got to half time and we got four in, and Barrow were two 0 down, needing a miracle to turn it around. So, yeah, frustrating one really to back up the previous week's um, Wigan. It let us down. So we're knocking on the door. We're very close, but that was annoying. Yeah, I'd have never put Barrow in. Joe's back. Yeah, by the way, we should reference this that uh, Joe's going to be on it anyway. But Jimmy's got what's the official reasoning. Um, Can't be asked to see yeah. the house ish. Seasonal cold. Ill, I guess. Mm. A lot of players are getting ill at the moment. You've seen that the amount of footballers who are last minute decisions that you see that have got sickness bugs going around and stuff like that. I think everyone's getting something. It's the fixture list catching up with Jimmy, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. He's, he's a lot in, of football. Uh, he's a rotation, so. A lot yeah. of football. You can't smoke that many roll ups and expect that you're not going to get the odd cough, can you? I didn't think of this actually. Need to look that, at his lifestyle uh, choices. Jimmy usually does all the comments, doesn't he? Yeah, I've just, uh, I've just gone. Now, yeah. uh, any any interesting ones at all? Um, well, there was one. I think it must have been during the actual, um, well, the, the actual games going on. Someone, what hope? What hope? Three Barrow goals. This has ruined my afternoon. Um, yeah, I think it ruined all our afternoons actually. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking board the comments. We do like the comments coming Fair, in. It was Sean Scott. Dennis, 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 who Dennis, said that, Dennis, yeah. then said Villa to beat Brentford is a no-brainer, then replied going, well, it looked that way. Yeah. Obviously they did because rough rides, but as a Villa fan, I'd also say they're too short. That was a debate we had last week. They were, I thought, fuck it, we missed a trick here not putting them Me in. Me too. I and then they I've, just completely blew it anyway against I thought Brentford. I've shafted it by not having Villa in a cruising victory, but um, yeah, Brentford turned it around and for some reason just gave it away again, but... Yeah, that was a, that was a good swerve. We are capable of doing those and avoiding teams that many think might should be staples of the Acker. That was a good one, but yeah, I, I think the Barrow one's going to take a while to get over just because of how bullish we were on them. Jonathan uh, Edwards said the uh, the uh, Jonathan Edwards, you think the former Olympic champion triple jumper, still world record. Only you'd know that. I I no, I was honestly going through my head, going who Jonathan who Edwards, yeah. yeah famously used to refuse to compete on a Sunday because. Famously. Very devoted to God, yeah. It much was like, it was much like thing, the yeah. uh, entertainer, the toy shop doesn't open mm. on a Sunday, does it? It's mm. a nice related really? thing. I, I think that's the reason why, yeah. I did not know that. He said, uh, whether it's the world record triple jumper, was it, that you said there, whether it's him or not, he said, most would have picked Barrow as a bit of a banker at home anyway. And Ray Stevenson, Columbo, was the detective I think I was thinking of last week. Yeah, and, yeah. You, know, and you work said it out. Poirot, didn't you? I'm trying to work it out, but that I think that's the one. Jonathan no. Edwards has actually turned away from God, by the way. He's trying to complete that. Um, so he went from refusing to compete on a Sunday to now uh, he's an atheist. So, um, yeah, things can change. Maybe he is back in the acre every week. Can you get in touch, Jonathan Edwards, 2456? Let us know. Let us know real if you are a former Olympian. Yeah, well, yeah, Olympic champion, current world record holder. There we go. Triple jump. Look out for him. Imagine. This there summer. we go, yeah. No. It's been a big week for the Townsend household in terms of... Oh, it has, yeah. Olympic chatter. Big time, yeah. My wife was on TalkSport um, talking about the fact that there's so much shit in Paris rivers that they might have to cancel the swim leg on the triathlon in the Olympics. <laughs> so it's, it's good to know that their rivers are just as infested with 
um, crap as ours are here. So at least everybody's going to die a slow cholera-based death. <laughs> we will um, obviously start to pick the hacker shortly, we but unfortunately I was busy, show. so I didn't catch it. Um, but was there an alternative suggestion if they had to change that leg of the triathlon? It was, Where are we going? It was on Hawksby and Jacobs, um, and one of them asked whether they could just do the swim in a swimming pool. But obviously, it's in the Olympics. They want it in front of the Eiffel Tower, that backdrop. So she actually answered really well to say, well, the triathlons like that do exist. Yeah, there is one this weekend. Because I would have been like, well, obviously, they fucking can't. No, because it's live on TV to billions of people. Um, so they just don't do the swim. They just do the bike and the run. So, so it changes the sport completely. It would be like, oh, we've run out of time of football. We're just going to make this a 45-minute game instead of a 90-minute right. game. I did see something about a can of Coke, but I don't know the context of this. Yeah. That's to try to kill the bacteria that uh, might be in the water. It's a bit of an old wives' tale, but apparently it works. On to this week's Acker, anyway, then. Oh, That's yeah. our nice little uh, weekend weekly recap. Um, this week's Acker, how did we find the slate? We're now at the hashtag cliched business end of the season. Yeah. How did we all find it? We've got a few in the Prem that maybe we could touch on. Obviously, the Champ League, One League, Two National League, all that as well, the usual. I didn't hate it this oh, week to be it. honest there's yeah. quite a lot there that i think we could go at loved it yeah um i just want to start off because we, we spoke a bit last week about trying to measure price and motivation because obviously you get some home teams that aren't playing for anything playing against away teams that are playing for everything be it promotion relegation etc and we had one of them in last last week northampton obviously they won they relegated carlisle but last weekend there were six matches where the home side had effectively nothing to play for apart from pride in front of the fans uh, taking on an away team that was either playing for promotion or whatever, trying to get in the playoffs. All six of them won. All six home teams that had nothing to play for, the cliche nothing to play for, um, which obviously saw their home prices bigger than perhaps they should have been um, because of the, the motivation factor. They all won. Is that the pressure on the away side, the home side playing with freedom? Are they just saving their best for home matches and kind of resting in the away matches? I, I, you know, those thoughts were going through my mind. Um, and then just to round off this week's category... For those matches where you got home team not nothing to play for, away team would also play for. Bristol City taking on Huddersfield, Carlisle at home to Blackpool, Swindon at home to Wimbledon. Big prices, all three of them. And I'd like to throw Bristol City in the mix straight away. Oh right, okay. As I said, uh, that's an, an interesting pick. opening pick. There's a lot of early, um, early short prices on the three pm. This one is not. No, this or is a. We'd go strong early. Let's get a nice one to two or in and get out yeah. of here. But no. But as you could tell with the way I was going with my spiel there, I couldn't really pivot to a short price home yeah, team. I, just, yeah, I was I curious how you were going to do it. I just assumed you were going to say all that and then there wasn't going to be a point at the end of it. Which yeah. <laughs> I would have... What have been, we learned from this? Yeah, fine with it. Yeah. Uh, but I was, that is what I thought was happening. Yeah. I mean, Bristol Brit City, fresh off a 5 0 oh. battering of Blackburn, who 10 days ago scored five themselves. If that's not the perfect summary... Of the Skybet Championship, yeah. I don't know what is. Having spent all their previous games, 1-1, 1-1, 1-1. They're brilliant. Bizarre. But yeah, this is it's mainly down to Bristol City just in general. Their form, especially at home, has been fairly solid recently. Won three in a row, beat Leicester, Swansea, obviously hammered Blackburn. Then a couple of dodgy defeats in between. But before that, they beat Southampton as well. So it's a good home team. And Huddersfield, yes, they are playing for... You know, fighting for their lives, but they are looking atrocious to say the least. I'm really worried about them. Uh, I know they're above the bottom three at the moment, but the way in which they're playing, the results they're getting, I'm not a massive Huddersfield fan. And this weekend, I think seven to five is just too big. I think it is the price is bumped up because of the fact that Bristol City are cliche not playing for anything, but you know, they've not been playing anything for anything for a couple of months now, and they've been beating teams that have had stuff on the line, like Swansea when they played them at home were you know, in the relegation mix. They beat Leicester, who obviously were playing for the title. Blackburn are not, not out the woods yet, and they've beaten them. So I do think there's a bit of juice in this price, and it would be a little bit of a bumper for what I reckon, you know, it would open the door for maybe three or four shorter prices. Oops. I mean, yeah. West Brom are the only team there that have beaten Bristol City in the last six, is it? Some good results in that. Yeah, I, re I really, really like it. Um, Tuesday night, then just for a bit of fun, I, I built an in-play Acker at half-time. It didn't win. Didn't even go close. <laughs> um, but the, one of them that did was uh, Preston to turn it around against Huddersfield. Because Huddersfield were, I can't remember the price on Preston, but Huddersfield were 4-7, to seven, I think, or 4-6 to six 
to win that game at half time and there was just no chance the garbage and um and obviously they actually held on quite well considered late goals in the end um but they're just capitulating because they're just not a good team Bristol City playing really well um they're a team to probably watch out for next season in particular the price is enormous yeah um absolutely enormous uh so yeah, I'd have no um, issues. It gives us loads of wriggle room for uh, building up the rest of the acre as well when you're starting with the 13 to 10 shot. You touched on it there, though, but it does feel as well that if Huddersfield scored, would you bat them to survive a second half onslaught? Oh, Probably abs- not. Absolutely not. Should we take it? Should we just go straight away unless anyone else wants to chuck in any other points about this game? I had nothing down for this, to be brutally honest, but it's one of those that I'd go, yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. More than happily. I think uh, the Huddersfield's attacking struggles definitely... Um, worry me Bristol City have kept five clean sheets in the last six so I think that that it could be a case of Bristol City winning handsomely like they did in, in midweek and yeah Huddersfield that not only the results poor but the quality of opposition they played recently have been poor as well um you know they, they beat Millwall team that are down there drew away at Stoke team that are down there lost to Coventry team fighting for promote uh, for top uh, for playoffs drew away at Rotherham which is an absolute horrendous result everybody even Plymouth are beating Rotherham which says a lot um, and lost at Cardiff as well who again are just one of those teams that are middling nothing to play for a bit like Bristol City but I think Bristol City have got a bit more quality than Car- uh, than Cardiff so yeah price for me I think is too big and I'm more than happy to back them let's take it then first pick of this week's Acker it comes from the Skybet Championship it's Bristol City for a home win over Huddersfield So Jake touched upon there then, that's a big price in Bristol City. There is some wiggle room now that I don't think we have to really worry too much about prices of other teams unless we do think they are too short for obviously footballing reasons or whatever. Who would like to go next? Yeah, I'll go, mate. Then um, biggest banker of the weekend for me that I would be really surprised if you guys don't agree uh, Wrexham 2-5. Oh, to five. I the wrong one. Let me just say go. <laughs> yeah, to beat Forest Green. Um Hugely uncomplicated explanation. Wrexham have won almost every game at home this season and most of those wins, they've wiped the floor with the opposition. Forest Green, um, one of the worst teams, not just in League Two, but they're going to have like a terribly low points total all round. Complete havoc at that football club all season. It would be an incredible shock if Wrexham didn't win this game comfortably. Uh, two to five sounds short, but we've talked about this on numerous occasions before. If you get in a matchup like this, further up the leagues, I mean, you look at um, Manchester City against Luton. I think Man City are one to nine to beat Luton. Um, I'd probably give Luton a better chance of getting something at Man City wow, than Forest Green against Wrexham. Wow! But the disparity in price is there. Crazy. Uh, it's why the EFL is a much better place to try and build your acca. Uh, because it would be an enormous, enormous shock if Wrexham don't uh, win this game handsomely. Against the current bottom six, I had this down as well, Wrexham's record, eight wins, two draws and a defeat as well. That's not just at home, obviously, that's everywhere. Um, Yeah, straight away, this one jumped out to me. Mate, get straight in. Um, I I won't quite go as far as saying that Wrexham should be around one to nine, but... um, Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, they should be shorter than this two to five. I mean, they they can be promoted with a win here as well. Um, If MK Dons don't beat Mansfield, they are promoted this weekend to League One, which... um, you know, they had a little wobble in the mid-season, but they've really finished strong. And just for Forest Green, I mean, they've been absolutely slapped around by Wrexham's promotion rivals in the last four weeks. Um, they lost to Stockport, Mansfield and MK Dons without scoring. I fully expect them to get the same treatment um, in Wales. And yeah, it's one of the short ones that we can sneak in. I was just doing the mental arithmetic there. I think the shot count against Mansfield, MK Dons and Stockport... Uh, across those three games, Forest Green had seven shots. I think their opponents had 45. Yep, so they were very competitive. It's not like it's yeah. even like, you know, 3-17 three, three against Mansfield, 3-14 against MK Dons, which we discussed previously, 1-14 against Stockport as well. That's insane. Not even being particularly competitive. And those were home games, some of those yeah. as well. Um, I, I feel like that. I, I feel sometimes unsettled when we just rattle through a selection. Yeah. And I feel like we need to say... Is it giving you Barrow else? vibes from last I don't uh, last know. Week? It just feels like we're all so confident on it that do we need to say anything else or should we just stick it straight in and go? Stick it in and get the next one in. That was nice and easy. Then second pick then of this week's Acker, joining Bristol City, we've got Wrexham for a home win over Forest Green. So yeah, I'm a bit 
off like, uh, I don't know what, thrown off a bit by the fact that we quickly rattled through a selection there in Wrexham to beat Forest Green. Uh, with Bristol City, by the way, the double well above 2-1 to one as well, obviously, with that Bristol City price. So we're in a nice place. I'd like to stay in Skybet League 2 and your thoughts, please, on Doncaster Rovers to beat Accrington Stanley. Home win around the 8-11 to 11 marker. Do we all just agree and get on with that or do you want a bit more? I think we agree and get on with it, yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a bit more because I've been <laughs> looking into this about Doncaster Rovers. Now, I know they've been good, right? I know they've been winning loads of games. Do you know where they are in the table? I, I was playoffs. shocked. They are yeah. four points off yeah. the playoffs. It's when the hell did that happen? I thought, oh my God, like this team were... We were talking relegation around Christmas, like January time. I thought, what? This is just bizarre. So, here's my fact of the episode. Less than one month ago, Doncaster Rovers were 750 to 1 to make the playoffs. Wow. 750 to 1. Less than one month ago. Uh, now, as short as sevens. I can't believe you didn't tip that up in your league. We should have seen this coming, yeah, shouldn't we've I? Should have. 14 to 1 to finish in the top half at the same time. They're now 1 to 10 to do so. So from 750 to 1 to 7 to 1, still a bit of an outsider, but this shows what remarkable form they've been on. After the 1 1 draw with Bradford, they were 20th. That 1 1 draw with Bradford was at the beginning of March. They were 20th, 40 points gained with 35 played. They've now played 42 games, they have 61 points on their tally. Maximum returns, there were 14 points adrift of the playoffs and those seven consecutive wins, I should say, are now within four points of the playoffs with four games remaining. They might just fall short, even if they win out, just because there's too much to do. But with one defeat in their last 14 games, it would be absolutely incredible, if they, even if they miss out on goal difference on final day or something like that, because that is the... Negative one of the things that obviously from the start of the season that's going to catch up with them but from 750 to 1 to make the playoffs to now being four points off in less than a month Remarkable. absolutely incredible you've been saying it all along about Grant McKenna. well no if we're really honest then start of the season we really stuck with him it's mainly me and TC because we really love Grant McCann think he's a brilliant manager we lost hope yeah. I reckon around Christmas time we're like just looking like it's going to be season of struggle but what a manager he is he should not be managing in league two for Doncaster I, he's crazy he was managing in the championship doing a great job at Hull he should be in the championship for a team that's like scrapping to get in the playoffs and he's it's incredible he's done not done a bad job anywhere Doncaster Peterborough Hull all three of them he's a brilliant coach and he's clearly like turned the squad round it's taken time to do it and now they're rolling. But like I hope for Doncaster's sake, they get in the playoffs, they keep him, it goes well next year. Someone is taking him in the summer. They have got to see what a good coach he is. He's unbelievable what Might he's done there. Lot. It's incredible. You might take him if it all goes to shit. I um, don't want to talk about Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. At the start of the season... Well, you might take him if Danny Roll gets poached. Yeah, Doncaster were 28 to get relegated. I think they were around that. They were quite a big price. I remember looking at it thinking... Squads doesn't look particularly great, but then the Grant McCann thing put me off back in them. And then around Christmas time, I thought, oh my God, if they go down and I've not done this, I'm going to be so angry. And now I'm thinking, imagine if I tipped up at 28 to 1 and they go on and win the fucking playoffs. <laughs> That'd be ultimate humiliation, wouldn't it? Um, you mean like tipping crew to be relegated and then to be in the playoffs? Yeah, basically. Or tipping, say, mid season, I don't know, Colchester to uh, finish in the top yeah. half, they get relegated. Or Cheltenham to finish in the top half and they get relegated. Or Bristol City to make the playoffs and they're absolutely nowhere near. But maybe Plymouth might go down to sign, kind of say <laughs> good Yeah, yeah. Thoughts on this one then? I know we've talked a lot about Don Accrington, to be fair, of, you know, hit and miss. They are very okay, hit and miss, yeah. But, I mean, you just want to <laughs> side with a team whose form much like we spoke about Lincoln and maybe we'll talk about them in League One, Doncaster has been just like an extreme, one end of the extreme. And to be fair, at the start of this run, they were there was a good distance between them and relegation. I think it was 12, 13 points. They were never at that stage before this run, or early March, it never looked like they were going to go down, but it never looked like they were going to be anywhere near the playoffs either. Yeah, and um, the, the run, is, you mentioned seven wins in a row, but it's 11 wins in 14, which is phenomenal. Um 
six straight wins at home and they're playing an Accrington team who don't travel well. They haven't recently anyway. Once lost six of the last ten and only they've won, I think, two in that time, but against teams with the cliche nothing to play for. Um they've they've gone there in, in a kind of dead rubber. They've got the better of teams and yeah, I think the way in which Doncaster are trending is for I just five to six is it's the price is just too big as well. Same, yeah, same for me. Five to six. Too I big. think that if people cotton on to it then it's, it's, it's hard to know with a, you know, like a team that's mid-table in League 2 whether people will cotton onto it by kickoff or not. Uh, when they're up towards the top and you can see the price is clearly wrong, um, then there'll be a rush on it. But um, that might still be there by kickoff, but it'll be wrong. There's no way that they ought to be 5-6, to six, so that's why it just has to go in. Honestly, like their form, I know they're basically winning every week, but you know... I don't feel the same way you kind of get to this end of the season, and particularly League Two, only really paying attention to the top four in terms of the automatics, the group of Crawley, Wimbledon, uh, Warsaw, Harrogate for a bit when they were kind of in that, and then the four teams who could go down. The rest of it, barely look at. So I nearly I nearly went to our tech team on the site and nearly reported this as a bug, like an issue. When <laughs> the saw, Doncaster. Doncaster were 10th in the league. I was like, when the hell did this happen? Yeah. Should we take them? Yeah, uh, selection. Uh, just final point is that Doncaster at home, they've actually been beating teams that have had stuff to play for as well. It's not like they've just be- beaten up on teams that have they given up on Rexham. the season. Yeah, they? they did Walsall in midweek, who were obviously playing for that, that last playoff spot. Wrexham, Forest Green fighting for the lives, Crew fighting to get in the playoffs, Wimbledon fighting to get... So they're not just you know beating up on rubbish teams. They're actually taking on and beating teams with stuff to play for that have stuff on the line. And I think that's even more of a reason to get them in. There we go. Then joining Bristol City That's and cool. Wrexham. It's another home team and it comes from Skybet League 2. It's Doncaster for a home win against Accrington. So our treble then is pushing around 5-1. to one, So we're in a nice little spot at the moment. Um, could I interest anyone in a short price one? And Stockport County. At home to Morecambe. There's some faces being pulled here. Um, but uh, we may as well congratulate Stockport County on promotion. Back to League One after a long old time out of it. How long is it? I didn't write down, but a long old time. About 15 odd years, is it? Or something like that since they've been at that level. They are all but promoted. Vastly superior goal difference over MK Dons. Mathematically secures promotion with a point. Um, To me, this is the ideal opportunity. Bit of a party mode. It's, again, they have still got a title to go for. And that was a point that was made. Um, despite the fact that even though it's not there, the little P next to the name, it is basically there because MK Dons aren't going to make that goal different shift. Against Morecambe, who part of me is going, ah, I've seen this before, the script says Morecambe, turn them over and the cliched champagne on ice, because uh, we are at champagne on ice type of season, that time of season, does come out. But two of Stockport's home defeats this season came against Crew and Mansfield. Gillingham beat them 1-0, that was on opening day, though. Since then, it's 13 wins, five draws, and those two defeats I mentioned in front of their own fans. Six defeats from the last eight for Morecambe. It just feels like this is the chance that we can properly do it after a club that's been through so much, been down to a deep level of the pyramid in the National League North, to then bounce back. Great opportunity now, in front of our own fans. Let's get a win. Let's go out in kind of style. Let's get promoted mathematically and do it. It... It just seems to me that this is the weekend you want to do it. If you're going to celebrate promotion, do it now and do it in front of your own supporters in a a game which, you know, away teams that we talk about there were nothing to play for. Stockport are going to be banged up for this if they weren't already. Seriously long pitch, that one, wasn't it? I think for you're, a two to you're seven really shot, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to exhaust us into submission. I just feel like, is it one of these that, you know, it, it is and it isn't mathematically secure, but it's just such a good opportunity to do it, isn't it, now at home? You don't want to do it on the road somewhere else. You don't, you know, you just want to get it done now. And they've still got the title to go for as well. There still is something to play for. They can't down towards Wrexham. I know they've got a game in hand, but Wrexham are four points behind them. You just want to make sure that you're going to get this title secured. This is what makes me edgy. So the two to seven, yep. then yeah, very, very short. And it's the fact that they've got a game in hand. The four points clear, a point gets them promoted. They ain't going out for a point. So it's they just ain't going out for a point. It's just got the hallmarks of potential draw. Not like not deliberately, but you know, if they're one nil up, 
um, or they get like 2-1 up. Latter state just changes the whole dynamic of the game because they know then if it's getting to if it's one one or two two in the latter stages they're not pushing up to win the game they get they want to get to the end of the game and draw and then they know they can celebrate they're not throwing everything forward to try to win which changes the dynamic so having it in at two to seven I just think that's a risk that's not worth taking with the other options that there are this Saturday this looks so they're three nil up at half time mm-hmm. and on the beach in the second half passing it round because their next games Notts County were rubbish and there's a really good chance to get something there they'll know that let's just go out all guns blazing they're three nil up at half time hey we've done it party time let's go I, I agree with all your points it's more it's the two to seven that puts me off so if this was up towards should we want 8 to, to 11 or something. We want to 10. It should be Man City Luton territory. Yeah. It's the, that just... But Morecambe are a better team yeah, than Forest Green and Wrexham are a similar standard to Stockport. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm with Joe. I, I don't I don't think this should go in on a price basis. I think it's too short. Morecambe as well, they've won five of the last nine away games. So they, they are decent travellers. They've been to MK Dons and beat them when they were flying at home. Um been to crew and beat them as well so they, they are capable of causing a bit of an upset and the main thing is they can score goals i know stockport have started to keep it a little bit tighter but Morecambe have shown that they can go away from home score a lot of goals that fills me with doubt around a two to seven shot i fully expect stockport to win don't get me wrong but most importantly i'm sitting in jimmy's chair <laughs> get well soon jimmy and the thing is like Famously, or oh, this might not be well known, Jimmy has never listened to an episode of the podcast, so we can say anything about him here and know that it's never going to get back to him unless someone grasses me in. And I know for a fact that Jimmy would be pitching for Steve Evans Stevenage to win on Saturday. Tell us about that then. Who are they playing so and where Stevenage, are they? one to two, eight to fifteen, at home to Burton, who cannot buy a win. Um, one of the I worst. I can't believe they're not in the bottom four. League so. one. Uh, it Steve... actually defies science, doesn't oh. it? The fact that they're not and in the bottom four. <laughs> it actually <laughs> might be okay as well because everyone else is. Everybody shit. else is losing so much. If they win one match, they'll probably stay up. Um, yeah. So Stevenage uh, have got a really good record against the teams in the bottom uh, five or six in the league. They'd been on a, a bit of a tricky run. They were winless in eight matches before midweek, and then they just completely beat the shit out of Barnsley in midweek, basically. Went 1-0 down um, early on, equalised on the stroke at half-time, and then they just threw the kitchen sink with direct football. They should have been uh, probably 4-1 up, um, and then weathered a little bit of a storm, a few goals across, sorry, balls across the six-yard box, um, a late penalty shout, but... They're just going to do the same to Burton. They'll just try to to beat the hell out of them. I uh, just can't see anything but a, a home win for this playoff chasing team against one of the worst teams in the league. So I was a little bit iffy about this. I didn't have it on my uh, initial long list. But the thing that's just sold me is I've had a little look at the fixtures. And Burton, they actually play Cheltenham in midweek. Cheltenham, who lost at home to Carlisle, who were already relegated. What an incredibly yeah. missed opportunity that was for them to drag themselves out of relegation. But that Burton-Cheltenham game is absolutely massive. Because if Burton win that, they are basically safe. Because um, Chel- or they'll at least relegate Cheltenham. Um, so that could be a case of... right, And it's at home as well. Burton at home to Cheltenham. So it's not like they're travelling. It could be a case of them almost not giving this game up, if you like. But not... Yeah. That I think they'll they, they'll have they're one all down after half an hour and getting the shit kicked out yeah. of them. They'll be like, "Fuck this!" Yeah, exactly. Let's just think about the next game where we're going to get the Try shit kicked keep, out of them. In keep players fit and look. I think they'll have one eye on that Cheltenham game, basically. And and I think Stevenage can take advantage because they're not ma- they're not out of the the playoff race. They need a lot of things to go their way. But Oxford play Lincoln, so that could be something that helps them out. They're three points off the the, the top six at the moment. They played a game more, but. If they win out, there's every chance they could sneak in, and this looks a great opportunity for them to to do that. So, yeah, good pitch, Joe. Um, and like I said, the fact that Burton have got that massive six point in the relegation um, in midweek, I think Stevenage can do them. Is that game at Burton? Yeah, by the way, I might go to that. That seems right up my street. That, yeah, that yeah. seems absolutely yeah. horrible football. While you idiots were watching the Champions League on Tuesday, <laughs> I was at Harrogate versus Grimsby. Awful game of football. Oh, Awful. You, you mean you missed the two-two draw and the three-three draw? Yeah, I missed that. I'd say I missed all of that. Sorry to take us off piece, but oh my god, this midweek Champions League was unbelievable. <laughs> so good, wasn't it? Well, to be fair, at least I was in last night, so I watched the PSG Barca yeah. game. Yeah. That was incredible. Oh, it was absolutely nuts. The it's 
Interesting that on the uh, overlap this week, there's Gary Neville and Roy Keane were talking about the worst, Gary Neville said, the worst moment he can remember in his career, or the, the most memorable, were when Man United conceded at home in the Champions League knockout stage because the stadium would just fall silent because of the away impact of an away rule. goal. Yeah, yeah. And how good is it, the absence of the away goals rule, how it's changed knockout stage yeah. matches in the Champions League? Yeah, I, it's just all be so cagey before. And yeah. just like, well, fuck it. We'll just try to score some more goals now. It's unbelievable. I agree with you from a neutral's perspective, but like also there's no jeopardy to... Like the 3-3 three, three draw, you may as well have not bothered playing. They're just going to go... Oh to my the God. That's right? that is no, the, the worst, worst thing take what, ever. But what have Man City yeah, yeah. got for that 3-3 three, three draw other than the fact they've drawn the game? Entertainment. That, goals what is Madrid. football about? It's not my opinion. I'm just I saw this oh. and I was like, I can kind of understand that there's no jeopardy to the like. If you there's went away and got a free free draw, you'd be like, fuck, right? Like, we're in serious business here. We've got free away goals. Like we've got a great chance of qualifying. And it ruins the home leg, Phil, doesn't it? You know yeah. What Phil yeah, Foden yeah. said afterwards, he was like, oh, two um, of the best teams in the world, all the best players going toe for toe. That must have just been incredible to watch. Oh, it were, yeah. Football. That's the take. No, uh, we haven't really got fuck off for that, have we? Yeah. By the way. Why we banger going? after banger in that game as well. Oh, Harrogate scored a banger nice at least against Grimsby. Yeah. So, you know, at least I saw one. I was also close to the dugout, so I saw um, David Artel, very cool head, as we all know, on the touchline, get booked around the 80th minute. I can't believe it took that long. So you got to see the nice dynamic of how they work and who goes and shouts at the fourth official and also how the fourth official board works. So that was my educational right. night. There's buttons buttons that they press what was it, it was, was Artel just tapping the assistant and go it's your turn to go and have a go at well him team. and Sean Pearson it was would kind of it's like uh, like a little dance you know like one would you know one would go up and go what's all this about then come on they got the disallowed goal everyone's going mad about it going this is an absolute disgrace watch the back on alternate angle yeah brilliant call well done to the linesman that was absolutely <laughs> superb can't say the same on the topic of midweek for some other refereeing oh. decisions that have happened in the championship oh, which wow. was Handball's been a very interesting point, hasn't it, this midweek? The Leeds Sunderland game, the Superman punch away. What a bit of defending. And then West Brom got a penalty for a bloke who's handballed it about 25 yards out, which yeah. is fascinating. Um, so while all that was going on in the yeah. Champions League, in the FL, not the best. Then <laughs> Bayern Munich didn't get a penalty for uh, Gabriel just picking the ball up yeah. with his hands no, right, right, right. <laughs> and then just passing it to his keeper. I didn't like, Saka did get a pen for getting cleaned out by Neuer. Oh, he's cheating. That was... Yeah, he's, that, that, he's, cheating, that is, he's actually he cheating. He tried to kick the keeper. I'm not having it. I just sent Saka off for that. I do like buying... Uh, I know we will get back to the Acker, by the way. Uh, who did we decide? Stevenage was the other one. <laughs> yeah. that, by the way, on the fourth pick. Uh, Sorry, everybody. It's a buy-in, though, that they uh, all knew to react like that. Because usually you just get one strike going, hey, hang on, they've all gone... He's picked that up. He's picked that up, referee. He's picked this up. Yeah. Back to the Akers. Yeah. <laughs> anything else? Want, anyone else want to say anything about midweek? Or Atletico nearly uh, conceded in the last kick of the game oh, as well yeah. against Dortmund. Honour of the bar. The bar. Post. Drama everywhere. Did we settle on Stevenage? Yes. <laughs> we actually we did, settle yeah. on Stevenage to draw us back to this Acker oh, yeah, four funny. teams. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been a good week for footy. Mm. It has. Hopefully, it'll be a good weekend for our Acker. Lock it in well, and let's move on because we're, we're probably annoying. Yeah, I had a, a long list of basically Stevenage just against other direct teams seem to win all the time as well. That was the other point I was going to make on that. But we don't need that because we've already settled on it. Fourth pick then of this week's Acker joining Bristol City, Wrexham and Doncaster. It's another home team. It's Stevenage to beat Burton. The fourfold, I was nearly said treble, there's four teams. The fourfold uh, around seven and a half to one. So Bristol City, Wrexham, Doncaster and Stevenage are the four that we have so far. As we said there, we're around seven and a half-ish to one. So we've got a lot of freedom for where we want to go to next. Fifth, final selection. I've still got a few on my list. What's caught our eye that we could look at? Yeah, I've got a few on my list as well, but none that I fancy as much as Lincoln to beat Wigan. Um, yeah. We're getting seven to ten at the moment and that looks a touch big. To me, you've got a Lincoln team that are unbeaten in 16. They've won 10 of those. They've won six of the last seven at home, six clean sheets. Wigan, two wins away in 11, lost six of those. Um, and it's a team that are playing hard. They've found a form towards the end of the season. The underlying data is excellent. They're top of the 16-game form charts, which is no surprise given their unbeaten run, but it does show that the results have been deserved. They're not being fluky. Um, and Wigan are kind of just going through the motions, if you like. Um, got a good result in midweek, but might a little bit fortunate to get that result. 
Yeah, it only had three shots on target, scored twice just after the hour mark and um, against the Charlton team who have been absolutely flying. I've got the um, the League One last 10 game form table in front of me actually in Charlton. Uh, one four drawn six in the last 10, but sitting at the top of that table by quite a way is Lincoln. So last 10 games, one eight drawn two, scored 27 goals, conceded just three. So a goal difference of 24 insane. in the last 10 matches. Uh, it really does feel like one of those selections to have in and we're going to just down in like mid table 11th place um that is very very uncomplicated that lincoln are the runaway form team in the efl along with doncaster so to have them to win at home against a team that are like pretty average um you take away the points deduction they're around like 10th yeah I think 11th in the table yeah there wouldn't be um, be on the outside of the playoff chasing pack but nowhere yeah. near really getting near the playoffs and it just feels like a no-brainer to have them in to complete a complete an acker yeah two wins from the last 10 away Wigan saying there that the team at home we have looked at them and they have let us down as a home team before but away from home it's just not really there for them um, do Lincoln make the playoffs Four games to go, two points trailing Oxford, of which they have to go to Oxford and play them as well. One of the big kind of games of the season of those that are remaining. It's tough to oppose them, isn't it? Really tough to oppose them. Yeah, I, I think they made the playoffs. I mean, Oxford have made a little bit of a run here. Uh, three wins and a draw across the last four. But if you look at who they've played, they've played Port Vale, Shrewsbury, Fleetwood and Burton. Um, and all those teams are currently in the bottom seven. So they've had a very easy schedule. They've made the most of it, but it does get a little bit tougher. Um, and that game against Lincoln is going to be a real test because Lincoln, like as we said, are absolutely flying. Um, Oxford play Peterborough. They play Stevenage as well. Again, a little bit, you know, depending on how that Lincoln-Oxford game goes and how Stevenage get on, that could be a huge six-pointer as well for playoffs. So, yeah, I probably would give the edge to Lincoln. Portsmouth on the beach, aren't they? Last day of the season as well for Lincoln, I think. So yeah. it'd be absolutely it's fine. In hand, yeah. Champions just having a great time. Yeah, these next two fixtures decide it pretty much for me. Yeah. And um, it, it is weird, though, how bizarre results can come out of nowhere, can't they, in the last few games of the season? But uh, Oxford against Peterborough this weekend is absolutely enormous. And then playing one another in midweek will ultimately decide it. I. Yeah, I would be surprised because it's only a two-point gap. Then, yeah, I'd be surprised if they don't make it now, which as a Barnsley fan is a shame because I think if they get in the playoffs, nobody will want to play them. On the, on the Are you play. nervous? Everyone wants to play, play Barnsley. Play. I'm not even nervous because... No. Um, I've already given up hope. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Six points ahead of Lincoln yourselves. Yeah, so if, I you... don't, if we make the playoffs the way that things are going, I think we've got absolutely no chance... So it's not like, oh, let's just get into the playoffs, see what happens. If we, something's got to change in the last four games, the we're going to get battered in the playoffs anyway. So it's no, it's not really any fun. And because we were in the playoffs last year and it was a really positive season, it's enjoyable. Now it's just like... And a traumatic end beyond belief. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Do you want to get your hot take on air? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> oh, about the manager? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it really crazy stuff does happen at the end of seasons I really hope this doesn't but it would not shock me if um, the ownership did something mental and got rid of the manager and brought Michael Duff back in it really really wouldn't um, and I actually think it would go down well that's why it wouldn't surprise me if they did the it way end, didn't you against yeah. Stevenage yeah. Neil Collins your footballer shit was the yeah, go yeah. Around. Um, so yeah it, it really I've, I don't want it to happen i think he's worked on in difficult circumstances but it's been a tough watch all season it's very hard to um explain that to people when your team's in the top six but it's not been enjoyable to watch I can only remember on a couple of occasions that's been an enjoyable game to watch whereas last year was a thrill uh so that's why it's been uh so difficult he's, he's barely had a chant for him for the fans even when there were a couple of points off the top two so that's why it wouldn't shock me Joe Townsend's Mystic Ball. Well, one of those playoff teams, hopeful, playoff hopeful, we should say, completes our Acker, which this week is five home teams. We have got Bristol City to beat Huddersfield. It's Wrexham to beat Forest Green. Doncaster to beat Accrington. Stevenage to beat Burton. And Lincoln to beat Wigan. The five-fold coming in around 13-1-ish. to 1-ish. Be a nice one to kind of, yeah. you know... 
not end the season, but towards the end of the season. Decent price there. And as we say, every single week, remember to keep it fun. Never bet more you can afford. Please gamble responsibly. Let us know what you think in the YouTube comments or on social media by searching Sporting Life Football and you'll be able to find us that way. And head over to sportinglife.com forward slash football at 12pm on Friday. You'll be able to find the link to back that acker at an enhanced price. Oh, one more plug. And if you haven't already, please follow and rate us on iTunes, Spotify or your chosen podcast provider. We will be back with you next week. Thank you.